Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. Are you looking to plan and book an upcoming Disney vacation? Contact the Tierra Talk Show's official travel agent, James from Destinations in Florida, by visiting destinationsinflorida.com backslash tiara for a free quote. The link is also included in the show notes on our website. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, former Disney animator Tom Cedar to the show. Welcome, Tom. Hi, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. We're going to talk a little bit about working for the Disney company in the animation field. You've been doing this for over 40 years. It's quite amazing. You have two books that have already been released, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But I'd love to hear about how you got involved with animating maybe as a young kid or a teenager and, and how it led to having an animation job. Well, I, I, I was born and raised in, in Brooklyn, New York, uh, as the son of a fireman. And uh, I was never really, you know, going to be an artist or something. You know, um, I just, I always had a, 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 a proclivity for drawing. And I, I always liked drawing things and I copied, you know, comics and things like that. And I draw Spider-Man and all that stuff. And uh, and when I got to uh, school, I went through public school, I found the class artist wasn't beat up as much. Uh, so, so this was a good thing. I was in a magnet high school in New York called the High School of Art and Design, which uh, which is one of the fame schools. And uh, and, and they, they are specific towards various trades. And, and uh, so I was actually able to take some classes in cartooning and animation. And it's the first time I was shown how to make something move. And I was so amazed by this. I just thought, oh, I've got to do this always, you know. And uh, my graduating year in high school coincided with the 50th anniversary of the uh, of the Disney Studios. And they had a big show at Lincoln Center in Manhattan uh, um, of about Disney animation where they showed the old feature films. And that's the first time I met Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston and Willie Reitherman and Ken Anderson. And I started to make the acquaintance of these people who create this work. And I thought, wow, someday I want to do that. You know, you know, how do I do that? And uh, I originally started in New York, and and uh, I was lucky enough. I got some very early good breaks, which is um, I got to work on a on a musical in 1977 called Raggedy Ann and Andy, that was directed by Richard Williams, who would later be the director of animation on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And uh, and and that became a, a lifelong association with with Dick off and on, and uh, I also got the chance to assist uh, an elderly Disney animator who had retired to New York City named Seamus Culhane. But uh, he had animated a lot of the High Ho March, uh, the Seven Dwarfs in, uh, in in Snow White. He also did a lot of Honest John and Pinocchio. And uh, he's, his name isn't as well known as Frank and Ollie's and all because at a certain, uh, you know, because he quit the studio at a certain point to go back to uh, Max Fleischer. But uh, I, I was fortunate enough in that I began my career when a lot of these golden age artists from the 1930s and 40s were sort of ending their careers. So I was like 19 or 20, and they were like in their 70s and 80s. But they recognized kindred spirits, and they kind of took you under their wing. And, um, and, and basically, I started to learn their secrets. A, a love, you know, of the art of animation and how not just to just move things for the sake of movement, but to create personality and to create uh, character. You know, like when you could create something that's so alive, you know, like like Ariel, the Little Mermaid is alive. She's in people's minds, you know, uh, more, you know, or or um, or Elsa from Frozen. More people understand her than they understand their own brother or sister. That's a success at the end of a very long process of, of character development and planning to create, uh, you know, something that's so special to everybody. And once you start to do it and get accepted in it, it's a, it, it is it's kind of like a drug. It's exciting to be able to create these things and, you know, it makes so many people happy. 
I really appreciate the work that comes out of it and what it comes as a final product. And I think one of your first projects for the Disney company was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That must have been a lot of fun. You were working on the weasels and a couple other background characters. So how are you kind of dividing your time in between all these characters? Are you well, you, you, you know, it depends on the scenes that you're assigned by by, by the director, by Dick. And, and, and also, Robert Zemeckis went over a lot of stuff with us. And, you know, for a live-action director, he was very uh, uh, you know, involved in the creation of the animation, and and uh, and he would tell all us artists at the beginning. He said he he said to us all. He says he says I don't know how animation is created. I don't know what you guys do. I know you sit there and I hear all the paper flapping, and then I see footage. He says I know how to tell actors where to stand and where to go. So to me, you're all actors, and I'm going to tell you where to make them stand and where to make them go. And we're like, hey, great. That's wonderful. <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> you know, and you know, one of the fun parts of, of working on Roger also was working with classic character designs. You know, like when you get to animate Bugs Bunny or you get to animate Goofy or uh, you know or, or uh, uh, you know Bambi. You know, it was just a uh, it was a lot of fun to work with these old designs and they're so beautifully done you know the you know the the famous successful characters that uh, i always say it's like you're it's, it's kind of like you're you're parking uh you know attendant at a restaurant and you get a porsche to park and you're like ooh, it just handles well and bob hoskins was a really nice man to work with he was he was charming he was a charming fellow you know you know an interesting little detail in in roger rabbit when um uh, at the end of the movie, when Hoskins is uh, is making the weasels laugh so that they fall over and all, there's this one scene where he does a handstand, and he's kind of a tubby guy, so he's doing his end over end flip on his hands and feet. That's really Bob. That's not a stunt. Uh, uh, Are you serious? That's really him. Yeah, yeah. When he was a struggling young actor, at one point he worked in a, in a circus and, and as a tumbler. And you also worked on the Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, as you noted earlier. And Little Mermaid kind of revitalized what the Disney company was trying to go for for so long and it started the the age of the Disney renaissance as a lot of people call it and working on these two projects which specific characters were you assigned to and uh, and sure. mermaid I, I worked on a certain amount not too too heavy because then I was put off on the Roger Rabbit short films uh, and and also I did Cranium Command which um, uh, you know for the, for the park for the Florida park which was actually uh, recently credited as one of the inspirations of Inside Out. Uh, so on Mermaid, I did a lot of singing fish and uh, a, a lot of kissed a girl, uh, that part. And I did the little polyp things that, that Ursula turns stupid mer people into when they fall into her power. And, and a little bit of Sebastian, you know, uh, in, in Under the Sea. Not, not, not the big scenes, like just a couple of the quickies, you know, uh, along with the more singing fish. And uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, um, uh, I was in on the early storyboarding of it. And in fact, I was sitting with Glenn Keane when he was designing the Beast originally. And and then later on, I, I got to animate a, a lot of Beast with Glenn. So uh, so I did um, I did the, the the scene of 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 the Beast learning to eat his porridge in the morning. And what was one of your last projects for Disney? that you worked on i uh, see well well you know i did lion king i did storyboard on that i did storyboard on po i was head of story on pocahontas i was directing um uh one of the parts of fantasia when uh when i uh, you know I, I made the deal to go over to dreamworks but uh, i finished up on uh dinosaurs we hadn't really had a lockdown story yet so i would make the little lemur character sound like roger rabbit hey look out <laughs> oh no that was close <laughs> That's a great impersonation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> were you always were you always the scratch test voice for your characters? <laughs> Sometimes when you can. Yeah. I mean, every animator is a little bit of a ham actor, you know, and <laughs> so we always get it get a kick when we could get a little silly, you know, get a little voice in here and there. You also have written a couple of books, a couple of animation books about the history and how it's come to be. And your most recent one was Movie Innovation, a history of computer animation and became into something even bigger than everybody thought it was going to be. Well, you know, the Pixar guys would all come down to Disney's and pitch Toy Story, you know, you know, to the heads of the studio because they were taking notes from the, from from Disney's, you know, and 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 the, we were sharing a lot of story artists. Um, uh, one of the one of the important people that we, you know we share would would be Joe Grant, and and Joe was this delightful 
uh, old Disney artist who lived into his uh, 90s, and God bless him, had a mind like a steel trap. I mean, his, he stayed clear, you know, all the way through. And, and he had worked on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and all, and then he retired for a while. And then after his wife died, you know, you know, his, his wife said, you're just going to be bored sitting home by yourself. Why don't you go back to work? And, and so he came back to, the, to Disney's on uh, starting with Aladdin. And so it's great because he worked on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and he and he worked on The Incredibles, and, <laughs> and like uh, you know, and 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 Toy Story, and but he but he had that really good sense of humor of a Disney cartoon where it's a gentle kind of it's a it's the humor is fun, but it's gentle. It's not uh, insulting. It's not negative. It's not iconoclastic. It's it's uh, it's it, it, it's whimsy. You know, it makes you smile. By the time computer animation really got going i was really so like not animating as much as doing a lot of storyboarding and directing but it was fun to interact with everybody and one of the reasons i wrote the book was that was that when we actually started thinking about where computer graphics came from uh you, you know i thought well i know all those guys and i remember when all this stuff was getting started and i thought i could talk to them and you know why not why not get everybody's stories now you know before people start checking out or something because a lot of the accounts that are written about computer graphics are written by science more science oriented or technology oriented people so there's a lot of it becomes tech talk you know it's like a lot of uh, you know well we had a 356 z buffer and then we needed to add anti aliasing so we you know and it's you know it just gets very dry but i found the the, the people building these things so fascinating you know the, these these people like john lassiter and 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 uh, ed catmull and all who who just looked at these large computers that were used to calibrate you know the trajectory of russian nuclear weapons and thinking let's make cartoons with these things well now i have three disney questions i always ask my guests i call them the fab three we're going to start with the donald question what was one of the disney films that was your favorite and you always like to watch it over and over again let's see well i like pinocchio I just I, I just think Pinocchio is one of the ultimate and in, in hand drawn hand handcrafted animation. The the technique is so beautiful in it, you know, and the the uh, the monster of the whale sequence, you know, is just so beautifully done. And, and and it's amazing that you know when you look at the swirling water and and, and effects and and the the uh, and and Geppetto and and you know and Pinocchio and all the stuff that's happening, and 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 you really have to like stop the film. And, and and just say to yourself, all of that was once blank paper. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? <laughs> um, I liked Goofy. Yeah, I like I like working with Goofy, and he's fun to draw. I liked him; he was a lot of fun. And I liked Roger Rabbit. You know, you know, you know, Roger was a lot of fun too. And our Mickey question: If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment. What immediately comes to mind? Oh my goodness. Uh, hey, clear the way in the old bazaar. Hey, you, let us through. That's a bright new star. Oh, come be the first on your block to greet his eyes. Do, 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 do. Well, I have to thank you so much for coming on the show, Tom. And I really want to plug your website, which is tomcito.com. Do you have anything that you can plug at this, uh, this time? Well, well, uh, well. Moving Innovation is is coming out August twenty eighth in paperback, and uh, and and so that, that should be a pretty pretty nice price. I think it's like around eighteen bucks or something, which is good. Uh, I've got a book that's due to come out, uh, which is interviews with with animation directors. So so you know you know me and, and a friend named Bill Croyer, who's a lead artist on Tron, uh, I directed Fern Gully. Uh, the two of us talked to you know Chris Sanders and Gary Trousdale and uh, you know you know John Musk and John Lasseter and uh, and and so that'll be called animation the director's perspective and I think that might be due out in the fall and then uh, and then and then I'm thinking myself of starting a new book project too which I can't really talk about yet but uh, I think it'll be fun. Mm -hmm.